All right, I'm back. We got ourselves a nice uh, old fashioned here um, that I've already been working on a little bit. It's uh, honestly my second one, but um, <laughs> this one sat around a little while while I was preparing this shave, so the ice has already melted a little bit. But we got some Wild Turkey 101, um, some Angostura bitters, a little bit of simple syrup, and orange peel, and two cherries because I think I'm just trying to burn through these cherries so I could get a different brand next time. But cheers! Oh hell yeah. The ice has already melted a little bit so it's already smooth as can be. Very rich uh, flavors. Subtle citrus, a little bit of sweetness from that cherry. Definitely a lot of the um, the bourbon coming through like the uh, spices and whatnot very nice very nice and a little bit of citrus coming through on the uh, aroma there as well hell yeah all right so just got back from a three-day or three-day camping trip and we are gonna go with Shannon Soaps in collaboration with BBS.Live, specifically Melly Mel Shaves. This one is F. Mel in the Chupacabra base. Gotta love that right there. Nice little side label. Uh, here's a look at the ingredients. <clears throat> There's a look at the soap inside. Firm, but not that firm press into it pretty easily I already have it whipped up right here in my 3d printed shave bowl this was a gift from Mary and the Barbarian my boy um, it was a Roger Quintero design but printed by um, Tony Dillette Tim Dillette can't remember it was a Roger Quintero design um, we're using a Trotter Handcraft Shave Brush. This brush is the newest brush in my collection and it has been seeing a lot of action in the rotation. We got the T1 Badger Knot on top that has nice little bit of jelly tips to it. Let's go ahead and wet the face, get right into it. Hope everybody is doing well. I am happy to be home. I'm a little bit um, a little bit tired, a little bit dehydrated, but um, I am so ready and excited to get a shave. <laughs> Definitely going without shaving for a couple days leaves you, uh, leaves you hankering for a nice shave. And there's a look at that beautiful lather there. It's got a nice sheen on it. Very, um, very dense and luxurious looking paint some of this on real quick so the scent on this one is inspired by Ferragamo F black which is an affordable um, an affordable cologne fragrance and it is one that Melly Mel really enjoys if you haven't checked out my boy Melly Mel shaves on YouTube Please check him out. I will mention his channel in the description of the video below. That way you can go check out his channel. Cool dude. If you don't know Melly Mel by now, you are missing out. The dude is a, a plethora of content. Really good dude. Good vibes. Positivity. The works. Um, so definitely check out Melly Mel. When I saw this one come out, I wasn't... Uh, wasn't familiar with uh, F Black from Ferragamo. I haven't smelt it in person, but uh, the scent notes look good. And um, you know, if Melly Mel likes it, then can't be that bad, right? And I'm really am glad I picked it up. I think it smells great. Uh, not the most complex thing in the world, but really approachable. Um, crowd pleaser type scent good stuff so 
Um, it's offered at TRC, the razor company. It's uh, made by Shannon Soaps. You know, the scent was inspired by Melly Mel from BBS Dial Live. It comes to us for $16.95 for four ounces in the Chupacabra base. And the scent notes are lavender and apple on top, black pepper coriander in the middle, and tonka bean and labdanum in the base. So, very nice. Um, very kind of classic men's fragrance. I would say it's kind of like a spicy fresh um, cologne. Really approachable, really nice. Um, today, we're going to be using the Henson Aluminum um, Aggressive. So this was uh, generously um, given to me to borrow from Brian from the Wet Shave Experience. If you haven't checked out uh, Brian's channel, please go check out Brian's channel as well. I will also mention his channel in the description of this video. Another good dude. really solid content and and just a good guy and a dude that I have done um, multiple of these little gear swaps where we just kind of send each other gear or samples to help each other try before we buy You know, real, real uh, spirit of the community type shit right there. So, when the Henson first came out, it was only their Henson Medium Aggressive, which was offered in stainless steel. And it was kind of, it was kind of like a, Either you liked it or you didn't. It was kind of like 50-50. And, um... A lot of people seem to... You know, enjoy... The efficiency they got with it. But still how... Smooth and approachable it was. But others... Thought it wasn't quite efficient enough. And it was kind of lacking that blade feel that a lot, about 50% or more of shavers um, kind of look for and enjoy in their razors. So it kind of only, kind of only pleased like 50% of the community. And one size doesn't fit all, so it's understandable. But, um... Their next move was kind of a little bit controversial. They only offered the uh, they only offered the aggressive and titanium at the time. That was their next move. And if you don't know, titanium is more expensive than the aluminum and stainless steel. And if I said stainless steel in the beginning, that was my bad. I believe the first release, the first launch was aluminum razors, not stainless steel razors. So forgive me if I mix that up. I'm not the biggest fan of Henson, so my history on them might be a little bit wishy-washy, but the gist is still there. So basically, if you wanted the aggressive version, you had to pay more. And uh, Ken from Shave326 made the comment that that's kind of like a... Uh, like a hobbyist shaver tax. Why are we paying more for a more aggressive plate when, I, what if I want the aluminum one that's a lot cheaper with an aggressive plate? You know, why, why are we making this weird distinction here? And I think Henson was trying to kill two birds with one stone. Possibly a number of shavers were saying, hey, are you gonna do a run in titanium? And then a lot of people were saying, hey, are you gonna do a more aggressive offering? And so I think they tried to kill two birds with one stone. Kind of a bad move there, um, in my opinion. I'm sure they sold well. And I'm sure they, um, 
you know, were decent razors, at least. But, um, that shaver tax was a, was a real deal, you know? Not everybody wanted to spend that extra scratch, like, a, like CDB would say. Not everybody wanted to spend that extra money on the titanium. And it really didn't make sense, you know, to spend that extra money uh, just for a more aggressive op offering. Unless you were interested in titanium specifically, didn't really make sense. And what if you were interested in titanium, but you wanted the medium offering? You know, what about those people? So it was just kind of weird, and you can't really please everybody, but I do think it was kind of a, a bad move. Anyhow, down the line, um, with more production time and probably more capital and everything, they made the aluminum aggressive. And so I think that's what we have here today is the al aluminum aggressive. Very lightweight. It has a god awful ugly looking handle and uh and head, um if I'm being honest. I don't like a thing about the aesthetics of this razor. Um don't really like it at all. I think the head looks chunkier than it really is in person. Um but that flat top just is not aesthetically pleasing to me and how chunky the sides are um like the chamfer there it it's like it's just i i rarely i rarely experience this where i have a razor that I know has decent efficiency but I still want to add additional pressure because I don't I don't feel enough of that blade and the thing about this oversized um, like oversized base plate and top cap really the way that it is designed is that if you're shaving, let's say like this is the optimal angle. If you go too far this way, you are getting no blade. If you go too far that way, you are getting no blade. Like it, it's designed in such a way for smoothness. Like, you know, it's designed to have like this uber smoothness. But it's like, I almost got to do like, practice strokes before I find the proper angle and if I don't keep the angle throughout the stroke I might be like good bad good bad good like as I'm doing a long stroke it's just it's a it's an annoyance and it was, I had the same impressions with the medium efficiency and I take like a lot of swipes to kind of like find where the blade is feeling right. And then once it, once it starts feeling right, I'll take a longer stroke. But it's just weird, you know, the, the sweet spot seems like it's thinner on this razor compared to other razors. And even though I'm sure this has you know, a decent amount of efficiency, considering this is the aggressive uh, offering, the more efficient offering. I still have the urge to add pressure because I just don't feel the blade. Even when the angle's right, it's like it's just barely there. Now, it, you know, being fully transparent, I enjoy a bit of blade feel. Not a lot, but I enjoyed a bit of blade feel. And I enjoy, you know, a medium efficient, too efficient razor. I like the razor to, you know, do what it is designed to do, and that is give me a close shave. So, 
I, I, I definitely appreciate the efficiency, but it's just, it's just like in a weird space where it's like I can barely feel the blade, and even when I add pressure, it doesn't really give me any more blade feel. I probably shouldn't be adding pressure, but I have the urge to add pressure because I can't feel the fucking blade the way I want to. <laughs> and it almost, like a lot of people said like, oh, because it's so mild, it's so smooth, um, the medium offering, they said like, oh, well, because of that, it should be a good razor for beginners. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it probably will be, you know, because they probably won't be cutting themselves very much. And um, it'll be a good transitioning razor, uh, possibly from cartridges, because you can add that additional pressure and not cut yourself, um, most likely. But that additional pressure after the shave is probably going to leave you some irritation. And if it doesn't leave you irritation, if you move on from the Henson, to a different razor. The Henson is one of very few that have that boxy, squared off um, design with the base plate and top cap coming together the way they do. Very angular. It's one of very few razors that do that. So let's say you move on from the Henson, you want to add to your collection. Now you got like this secondary transition because the Henson isn't like other safety razors and the sweet spot is going to be totally different you're not going to get away with using as much pressure that you can on the Henson and it's almost like it's a it's a stepping stone into traditional wet shaving but it's kind of like you're not really you're not really heading the right it, you're not taking a huge leap forward because it, it, it allows you to get away with all these bad technique habits that you wouldn't get away with with other straight or other uh, safety razors. So even though this one gave me a great shape, I ain't gonna lie. I uh, pretty positive on BBS. I'm pretty positive on BBS, and I don't think I cut myself anywhere but on um, one obvious blemish that I had on my neck. I saw it before the shave started because it was it was kind of below the beard line, so I saw it there uh, even before the shave started. So I was kind of aware it was there, but I I still ran right over it just to see if the Henson would cut it or not, and it did. So it's it's definitely cutting because I got I got a BBS uh, with kind of minimal effort so you know it gets the job done feels very smooth feels like a very comfortable shave as well if I'm being honest I don't think I'm gonna get irritation off this shave there's that uh, blemish that I cut down there but um, I don't think I'm going to be left with irritation off this shave. But regardless, my, like, the, my feelings about the bad habits that this razor can um, kind of let you lull into, uh, I still dislike. So it gave me a good shave. I was using my favorite blade, the Pulse Silver Blade. We got the matching aftershave splash with a industry standard quality restrictor. And... Go ahead and get a nice little helping of this. Oh yeah. That feels very silky smooth on the skin. I think we're gonna have to uh I think we're gonna have to do a round two here because this is actually smelling pretty good. And uh I'm enjoying this very good looks there. Gonna do some slap applications like my boy Mac Shaves used to. Fucking shout out to Mac Shaves from from back in the day. Not too far back, but we miss you, Mac. <laughs> we miss the slap applications. All right. That pretty much wraps up the shave. It was enjoyable, but my feelings on the uh, 
on the old Hanson there, even though the aggressive definitely gave me a better shave than the medium did. My feelings on it are kind of the same, like I still wouldn't pay my own money on it. And I wouldn't recommend this to newbies or anyone. <laughs> anyone. I think it's a, an ugly razor. And I think it teaches people bad habits. And it gives a nice shave. So at least if you do buy it, like, maybe you won't feel burned. But there's better options out there. That's my opinion. I appreciate you guys. The soap, the scent was fantastic. The chupacabra base is always good. So, alright. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you as always. Cheers.